morning and welcome to New Life Church Centre as we gather together this morning for our online Sunday morning service. We want to welcome you if you are joining us either by Facebook or YouTube and you don't normally worship with us, we want to extend a very warm welcome to you this morning also. I just want to start by reminding you of the words of Paul that he spoke to the church in Ephesus in chapter 1 there at verse 18 and he says these words, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his great power for us who believe. So this morning I say to you, may we also be have our eyes opened and be enlightened this morning that we will know the hope that we have in Jesus and his uh, great love for each and every one of us. So let's worship together and sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Your power and love as we sing for 
welcome to New Life Church with all. It's a pleasure to have you with us and to join with us this day. This is a service that we are putting out because of the lockdown, but you're most welcome if you're uh, looking into this uh, through Facebook or some other uh, platform. We just welcome you in Jesus' name. We're here to look at God's word for a few moments this morning. We're living in the time period of lockdown as we know it in our nation. And uh, I just want to look at the Word of God. We're in what you might know as a post-resurrection time, of course, uh, now after Easter, after Christ had not only died, but had risen from the dead. And the disciples were in a, a situation, um, not knowing really what to do. This was disturbing times for them that they were living in, and they really didn't know what to do and what direction to take. But before we do continue, let's just uh, pray for a moment and just... Uh, quite in our hearts and our minds and as we just look at God's word let's ask God to help us to understand his word by the Holy Spirit shall we let's pray father we thank you this morning that we're able to meet together like this we're able to share your word and to reach into homes and to families and to lives uh, wherever they may be but Lord we Lord to Lord look at your word this day and see what your word declares to us this day how you can teach us by your Holy Spirit, how we, how we would have us to act and react according to your word, that we might grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, that we might be know how to conduct ourselves in trying times such as they are at the moment. So Lord, just have your way amongst us. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible, of course, I'd like you to look uh, in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 24, and uh, we want to pick our reading up in verse 13. Uh, this is a, a scripture that probably might be well known to some of you. It's about the two of the disciples that uh, took a journey to Emmaus, um, uh, just uh, a little ways outside of Jerusalem, about seven miles, that's all it was. And uh, they, on this journey, had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. So let's just read a, a few of these words uh, in scripture. Luke 24, picking it up at verse 13. He says, Now behold, two of them were travelling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And so it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which have happened therein these days? And Jesus said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. And we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides, all this today is the third day since these things happened. And yes, certain of the women, our company, who arrived at the tomb early, astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying they'd also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but he they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets had spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened uh, to us the scriptures? And so they arose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem 
and found the eleven and those that were with them gathered together saying the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon and they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Now as they said these things Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them peace to you. Thank God for his word and for that that it portrays of the Lord Jesus after he rose from the dead. <laughs> As I said, this is post-resurrection time. And uh, this is something like 21 days after Christ's resurrection. We are really at that period ourselves, of course, now. For the text this morning, I'd like to take that where he, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus himself drew near and went with them. How many times in your life have you felt like you'd like that to really happen to you? That Jesus himself would draw near and go with you. That's exactly what he wants to do. And through this this morning, I want us to help you to understand how much the Lord loves you and how much he really does want to draw near to you. How much he does really want to go with you each day and every day. As I said, this journey was something like about seven miles from Emmaus to Jerusalem, pretty much like a walk from where we are at the church uh, into Birmingham. It's, it's about that kind of distance, perhaps two, two plus hours walking time. Now, we do know that one disciple was called Cleopas. We don't know the other disciple, but very often we find the disciples, when they write of these accounts, like John in the Gospels of John, he doesn't name himself. He just says about the disciple whom Jesus loved and so on. And here we find the situation with the other disciples not mentioned, but we only find Luke is the one that records this uh, occasion that occurred at that particular time. So it well could have been Luke who was the other one travelling to Emmaus with Cleopas at that particular time. It's a fair assumption anyway, I suppose. Now, in verse 17 said to us, as I was walking along, I was sad and downcast and so on because of the uh, events that had occurred in the recent days. And the, the Lord came alongside them, but they didn't recognise him. And they said, what kind of a conversation is this that you have one with another as you walk and are so sad? I'm sure you've been in that experience and that situation is sometimes in your life and you've been walking along and are so downcast and sad about a situation. You just sometimes wish somebody would come alongside you, perhaps at that time and encourage you maybe. Hmm. Jesus noted their sadness, how downcast in spirit that they were, how depressed really they were. You see, Jesus had just died, as I said earlier. They'd seen him crucified upon the cross of Calvary. Now, crucifixion was a common thing taking place in those days. It was not uncommon to see a criminal hanging on a cross at that particular time. That's the way it happened. And you could go around your daily duty and you could see someone being crucified, some criminal being crucified in this particular way. This was the form of execution that the Romans meted out to those that stepped out of line. Life was cheap. There was little accountability uh, for life that was lost at that particular time. It seemed all like their hopes and their dreams really, you know, were gone. Lost, as it were, seemingly forever. They said, that, quote, verse 21, that they were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel indeed. Was not that exactly what he was doing? Not only redeeming Israel, but redeeming all mankind who had come to him. Through him shedding his blood uh, on the cross of Calvary and giving his life in his way, he was paying the redemptive price for each and every one of us. But of course they couldn't see that. They could only see what had immediately taken place. And so this is where they found themselves. Their thinking really was what we might call perhaps nationalistic in thinking. They were thinking of the promised Messiah who would come to redeem Israel from the opposition and the oppression of the Roman army and the empire at that particular time. We read in another place, 
in John 6 verse 15 where Jesus perceived it says that they were about to come and to take him by force and make him king he was so popular with the people at that time but he passed through the midst and went out into a desert place you see that's the way their thinking was they thought the messiah was going to be the one that was going to rid them of their enemies but the real enemy is the enemy of our soul satan of course and he came to defeat him by giving his life on the cross of calvary for you and for me of course and everyone else who will put their trust in the lord and savior jesus christ you see jesus said in verse 18 of john's gospel verse 36 jesus said my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world my servants would fight you see he was not interested in building a kingdom here on earth of a natural kingdom but of the kingdom of heaven and then he as i said i go back to that word again in verse 17 what conversation he was saying uh what kind of a conversation were they having being so downcast i might ask the question perhaps uh, to you this morning what kind of a conversation uh, is this that perhaps you're having one with another and you walk and are sad as you go about your daily duty today we are hearing and seeing and, and experiencing uh, so much death that has taken place uh, all around us hearing such sad stories and the people are in a and that's why service staff that are putting their lives on the line every day, going uh, into the hospital, uh, facing this virus. Who knows whether they would catch it or not? But it's a depressing situation. It's not a happy situation by any means. So much sadness is around. So many hopes and so many dreams have been dashed, as it were. And hopes and plans for the future are all gone. So disappointing, so depressing and so disheartening and perhaps sometimes so disillusioned and perhaps by it all. So what is the tone of perhaps your conversation and of your thinking? Is it perhaps a little bit like the disciples maybe? Is it causing you to look down and to look inward instead of looking up to him, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ? In the midst of their sadness, Jesus drew near. And he will for you too, of course. Whatever is happening in your life, within your family, within your situation, whatever that might be. Perhaps what already has maybe have taken place. And however you are feeling, perhaps even right now as we speak. What he was to them, at their point of need, he will also be to you too, if you'll trust him for that. Jesus himself drew near. Just allow him to. For he is the one that will go with you. <laughs> their sadness was, was overwhelming at that time. Their answer that came in verse 19, he asked them what things, as though he didn't know what really they were sad about. You see, Jesus of Nazareth, they said, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God. The chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and to be crucified. This is their reply. You see, their hope. They were hoping that it was he who the promised Messiah, when he would come, who was going to redeem Israel, rid them of that oppressing, oppressing re regime of the Roman army at that time. He was going to redeem Israel. But you say that's exactly what he was doing. Besides all this today, they said, this is the third day since those things happened. Then they said about the woman's report that had been brought back. And certainly the woman of our company, as I said, who arrived at the tomb early, astonished us. They did not find his body, saying that he had seen a vision of angels, that they had seen a vision of angels, who said he was alive. Praise God for that. 
Then they went on about other reports in verse 24. Others went to the tomb and found it. We know that was Peter and John, of course. And just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. <laughs> you see, sometimes we can be so blinkered in our sadness that we don't realise that he is standing right there beside you. We sometimes we're so blinkered in the situation that is consuming us that we can be so blinkered that we don't realise he's right there beside us. Hmm. Remember Mary Magdalene when she was in the garden weeping outside of the tomb? Hmm. In that garden, when he appeared to her outside of the tomb, to Mary Magdalene, she thought he was the gardener, not Jesus. She didn't recognise him for who he was. They were sad. These disciples were depressed and disappointed and disillusioned. But what was Jesus' response to this situation that was so depressing to them at that moment in time? We read in verses 25, 26 and 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. That must have been an amazing Bible study, I suppose you might call it. He probably most likely started with Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, where Moses is speaking. And the Lord, he's prophesying here, will raise up for you a prophet like me from the midst of your brethren. Him you shall hear. This was Moses speaking all those years back. He probably quoted from the Psalms that were written something like 150 years B.C., <clears throat> Psalm 22 verse 1 says my God my God why have you forsaken me that's what Jesus actually uttered upon the cross in verse 7 and verse 8 he talks about the ridicule uh, uh, that, uh, that he experienced on the cross at that moment in time in verse 14 it says all my bones are out of joint while hanging on a cross suspended by those nails. That's exactly what he would experience. Your bones, your joints uh, coming, as it were, apart, being disjointed because hanging there, suspended on a cross by cruel nails. I said these were prophesied about 1,550 years ago. I think I may have just said 150 years ago. 1,000. 500 uh, years ago, something like that, before Christ came. Here from the very same Psalms, he would have said, he, he would have quoted probably, they pierced my hands and my feet. In verse 18, he probably quoted to them, <clears throat> they divided my garments among them. They had probably noticed that the, the, the soldiers gathered round the foot of the cross, casting lots for his garments when they witnessed him dying upon the cross. And they would be reminded of all these scriptures and probably many more, Isaiah 53, a complete graphic word picture of Christ crucified. This was recorded and quoted and, and prophesied 700 years before Christ even came. In Isaiah 14, he probably quoted, 714 says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Maybe he was Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government or the responsibility shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, and so on. And he goes on to say, and there will be no end. And he goes on to say later, that the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And this is exactly what Jesus had fulfilled. He probably quoted, quoted from the one of the minor prophets, Micah, uh, chapter 5 and verse 2. Uh, For you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, out of you shall come forth to me the one that shall be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth are from old and from everlasting, speaking of him being the incarnate Son of God. After this long journey, 
uh, some nice seven miles walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It was getting on in the day and so in custom, the, according to the Jewish custom, they said, well, why don't you just come and stay the night with us uh, and, uh, and have something to eat and to drink, and which of course, which is what he did. And Jesus was going to do anyway. And it was that they took the bread as they sat down to eat, that he took the bread and he broke the bread. They've seen him do it so many, many times before, I suppose. And he broke the bread. It was then that their eyes were opened, that they realised that this was Jesus. The one they seen die on the cross of Calvary. Now, it was him who was seen right there in front of him. For it was Jesus himself who said, I am the bread of life. <laughs> their eyes were opened, their understanding came that, that re this was really him. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, as I said, and our eyes will be open too, and our eyes of our understanding when we realise that he is who he said he really is. We might realise that Jesus has drawn near here today, in this place where you are, in your home, wherever you're listening to this. He's drawing near to the very words that I'm conveying unto you this morning or this evening, whatever time you're looking at this, that you might realise that he is drawing near to you right now. The very words that I'm conveying unto you is that you might hear of the love of God and of the love of the Lord Jesus for you, for he loves you so much. He gave his life for you. Through this facility of this modern technology that we're able to reach into each home, he's reaching even to you as you listen to this as we speak. When drawn, Jesus draws near, he brings change and transformation. A change of thinking, a change of outlook. A change brings hope. Praise God for that. Chains brings a future, a future to be desired. Change is fear to faith. Change from hopelessness to real purpose. Praise God that he can do that. Jesus himself drew near. That was good. Jesus himself drew near, but not just for a moment or not just for a season. Jesus himself drew near, not just when you need him, but he wants to go with you each day and every day. Not sometime, not someday, not perhaps maybe or whenever perhaps. He wants to be with you. Whatever is happening in your life, even now as I speak, he wants to be with you. He wants to draw near to you and he will make for sure make a difference in your situation if you put your trust in him. Like the disciples of old, you will say, did not our hearts then burn within us <laughs> when he opened the scriptures to them? What a difference it makes when we start to believe God's word. It changes and brings change and transformation to our lives that's what happened to me at 18 years of age. He brought change and transformation to my life when I believed God's word. Totally altered the direction of my life once and for all. Hmm. Jesus himself drew near. He wants to go with you, as I said. He wants to make a difference. As I said, like the disciples of old, you will say, did not our hearts burn within us when he opened to us the scriptures what a difference he'll make he brought hope he was the redeemer he brought purpose he brought peace their spirits rose their faith rose instead of negativity it changed to positivity he turned sadness to gladness he turned depression to possession of joy that's the reason that he came. If we look in the book of Luke, in our, uh, chapter 4 and verse 18, which is a, a really a fulfillment of prophet from prophecy of Isaiah, from Isaiah 61, the first three verses, which was 
prophesied 700 years before. It says there when Jesus stood up in the, uh, uh, amongst the people at that time in their synagogue. And he read the scriptures and he quoted these words, many others, but I just quote the part we need today. And he says that he came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to set at liberty those that are bruised. There are so many people that are broken hearted at this moment in time. So many that feel bruised because of what they are seeing and working amongst daily. Take for instance the National Health staff for instance. But Jesus is still and always will be the answer whatever given situation we may be facing. For this was the very purpose as it is coming to bring hope to bring healing, to bring purpose, to bring forgiveness, a future that has a glorious assurance. You know, we will say, also as they did say of old, as I said a few moments ago, but did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened the scripture to us. That's what I've sought to do this morning. To open the scripture to us this morning. That the Holy Spirit might have that opportunity to reach down into your heart and into your life. For he wants to draw near. Not physically like he did with his disciples of old. But spiritually. Right where you are, in your room, in your home, wherever you are listening to this. He wants to draw near. For you see, the scripture says that Jesus himself... Well, that's good. Drew near. That's better. But went with them. That's better still. And that includes you and me. He wants to go with you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. And shall we pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could come and approach your awesome throne of grace and mercy at any time, at any place, whatever the situation in our life might be. And even at a moment like this, here today, we want to realize afresh that you are the one who wants to draw near and who wants to go with us, be with us, and bring us through each and every given situation that we may face. And whatever it may be, Lord, we just pray that we might look to you that we might invite you into our lives. That you might take up, as it were, full place, position and residence in our life. That you might lead us and direct us. That you might truly have your way in all of our lives. Whatever may be taking place in them. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. You said you came to heal the broken hearted. And those, and those that are bruised. So many people feel like that today, broken hearted and bruised. We bring them to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, those that are suffering with this virus, we pray that you'll restore them and heal them. We thank you for the medical staff and their expertise. Lord, we thank you for everyone that makes this possible and makes life living for us at this moment of lockdown possible. We pray for them all, Lord, that you'll give them great wisdom. You'll strengthen them. You'll do equipment in every aspect of what they need to do. But for us, well, Lord, we pray that we'll also look to you too. Realize that Jesus himself desires to draw near and is near and wants to go with us. Have your way in all of our lives. And Lord, we might just seek to serve you. Have your way, Lord, we pray. In every life we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'd like to thank you for joining with us this morning and uh, listening to God's word. We'd just like to bring up just at the end of uh, what I've spoken, the various ways that you can support the ministry and the work of God that it may continue uh, as we should as a church. And we thank all those that have given and made it possible sending checks or directly that you've dealt with the bank and so on. We just thank you in Jesus' name that we might be faithful in our giving that God uh, has asked us and commissioned us uh, to do so and be so, of course. We'd just like to uh, give him all the praise and the glory for the opportunity that we have to be able to reach out and to keep in touch one with another. And of course, we have coming up 
uh, we have uh, ministry in forthcoming weeks uh, also for your benefit so please tune in uh, on a Sunday morning at 10 30 that we might listen to the word of God God bless you have a good day this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it God bless you